guys, 5-9 Gaming here back with another Godzilla video. Uh, this video is being recorded on March 24th, and at this point Godzilla vs Kong has been released in some regions of the world. Um, and as such, we have been seeing spoiler reviews, synopses, and even straight up clips from the movie being posted all over the internet. So, in this video we're going to be talking about spoilers, yes, spoilers, for the movie. And uh, when I say spoilers, I mean full-on entire plot details, you know who wins in Godzilla vs Kong and what the battle scenes look like and what happens at the very end of the movie. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to be spoiled or would rather watch uh, the movie you know, in theaters, wait for yourself to see the movie, stuff like that, that's perfectly fine. Um, just click off the video for now and um, we'll get started here pretty shortly. But I am Goresh, joined by Varied Geek. And if you guys like these kinds of videos and want to see more down the road, it would mean a lot if you could uh, just go down and hit that red subscribe button, as well as leave a like and or a comment on the video so that we can gauge feedback on this type of content. Now before we get started, let me just make clear that neither of us have actually seen the movie yet, so we can't actually comment on anything concrete pertaining to the quality of the film's plot, the CGI, special effects, none of it. We're purely going off of various online sources that have publicly provided um, some plot details for the world to see, and uh, we're just going to be giving our thoughts on those. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive in. <laughs> So we've seen um, from a lot of the trailers that have come out, you know, there's been like, I don't know, 500 trailers <laughs> that have come out. There's been like, <laughs> like in the past few weeks. Every day there's been at at the bare minimum, like two TV spots a day for like the past like two or three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really putting a lot into this into this movie. Um, but from the trailers that we've seen, um, obviously Kong is being kept in captivity by the humans. And uh, it sounds like the reason this is happening is because they need Kong to lead them to the hollow earth. Um, in order to obtain something that they that they need there and in a lot of the trailers i think this is one of the more important points that they've really focused on in the trailers is that girl that could like communicate with him yeah. i think her name is gia yeah um so i guess she's gonna play a major uh, uh be a major i guess swaying force of what happens in the movie um and uh, just going off of that point, the reason why they want to go to the Hollow Earth, according to what we've seen online, is to obtain some spe kind of special energy force or energy source in the Hollow Earth. Um, and, you know, uh, obviously we've seen the last trailer that they released was the first one to actually reveal Mechagodzilla officially. And um, I think the reason why they're going to the Hollow Earth is because they need um, the energy from there to power the Mechagodzilla. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right with the plot because i know there's like two factions so i don't know if the the people that are with uh kong like the group that he, that's with him is the good fact i don't know yeah they're the good faction and then apex is like the bad one but yeah i think the energy source they're, they're trying to get from the hollow earth um but yeah everything ju judging from what we've like heard and seen uh it just seems like gia is like the the direct like connection to kong is because kong is the she only he's the only one that she communicates with and he and vice versa so kong wouldn't communicate with anyone right. else so that, that, that's the only way they're yeah. gonna have him like follow any rules yeah it's the only way they can sort of control him right because they're not yeah. going to be able to like you know brute force their way <laughs> to make him do stuff yeah i, I don't think so <laughs> um yeah, so that's sort of like the the main trailer that we've seen. Like every trailer starts with that 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 scene on the uh, on the ocean on the boat, on the boat yeah. with uh, got, with a uh, uh, Kong there. So I assume what's happening is they're taking him to Skull Island or something, and then uh, they're going to try and use Gia to like let him um, show them how to get to the Hollow Earth. I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Cause yeah, there's like no mention of Skull Island like at all. They, every time we see Kong, he's just like on the boat or like in the captive like captivity place where he's at they never really mentioned skull island which is weird but um yeah in general i do i do like from the sound of it they're going way deeper into like the crazy sci-fi aspect of godzilla's like history uh slash kong because the last few i mean to a certain extent they've all been like kind of like uh, centered in reality and are rooted but this one feels more like a, like those crazy sci-fi ones, obviously like Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, but you know, like when the aliens came from the future, like it seems more, it's going more along those type of lines, which I personally am excited for. Yeah, I mean, it definitely paves the way for something else to come out of this down the line. Not saying in this film particularly, but if they wanted to expand on that universe, right, moving forward. Yeah, they could just say like, oh, um, Hollow Earth had it, or something, you know? <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. It's, it's something that they can very easily spin into a sequel or a trilogy or whatever they want to do. Yeah. Um, and then the next sort of plot point I wanted to talk about is why is Godzilla attacking people? Because initially when I saw that um, the trailer for like the first time they released it, the first trailer, um, we sort of already knew that Mechagodzilla was going to be the big bad you know, enemy of this film because of the, the uh, figure leaks, the toy leaks. Um, so initially my thought was, oh, this is actually not Godzilla, it's Mechagodzilla, because that's what happened back in, like I think it was the 1974 movie, where yeah. they first debuted Mechagodzilla. He was like a creation of like this alien civilization that they had used some kind of like cloaking or illusion thing to make Mechagodzilla look like the actual version of Godzilla. <laughs> um, and I thought maybe that was what they were going to go with in this movie, but no, actually this is the real Godzilla who's attacking like, you know, civilians and regular people, which we haven't really seen, um, I guess, really since the first film. So the question is, why is this happening? And uh, the, the thing, the, what I saw online for this is because he can sense the remnants of the King Ghidorah head being used in order to build Mechagodzilla. And if you guys remember, back, I think it was the uh, post credit scene of King of the Monsters back in 2019, yeah. um, they showed, I think, one of the King Ghidorah heads that was like still, I guess, uh, it still existed. It wasn't like completely burnt to shreds. Um, and I guess they're using that, the remnants of that, to create Mechagodzilla in a way. Which is funny because that's sort of what happened, right? Back in the original movies, yeah. they used Mecha King Ghidorah as remnants to build Mechagodzilla. So it actually is very, um, I mean, it, it's very like, you know, uh, it, it's, it relates back to the source material, right? Yeah, like, actually, that's a good mention. I, I That completely escaped my head, yeah. Like the first like shot of uh, Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla two, I think, is literally like the the metal head of Mecha Ghidorah, and they're like, okay, let's gonna reverse engineer it. So the way like you just mentioned like that, I didn't actually remember that. That's actually pretty cool. Another like little Easter egg. But uh, yeah, overall the the reason why Godzilla is attacking it makes sense. I feel like people were just like really apprehensive because everyone's used to like you mentioned already like we've seen godzilla in the 50s and even some of his uh films afterwards like he was still a bad guy in king kong versus godzilla the original um he no one in this monsterverse timeline like in the in, in real life or whatever has seen godzilla like be bad he's always been like or, or like serizawa in the film's always been like let them fight he's our protector he's our this he's our that so seeing him like super angry like he's like glowing blue like a lot and i've never seen like godzilla look like that and he's just like royally pissed about something so it makes sense that he's mad that he didn't get a ch like really finish the job <laughs> yeah and i feel like a lot of that has to do with the fact that back in king of the monsters he was like you know he, he defeated king Ghidorah, and he was the king like he yeah. was wreck all the uh, kaiju came up and they were like literally just bowing to him like that was the end of the movie yeah so him not sort of getting that recognition that he deserves, I think, is why he's so upset. And um, him sensing the fact that, you know, mankind is building this um, this Mecha Godzilla thing, like, it's sort of like them defying Godzilla in a way. I feel like it's why he's upset. Um, so that I guess that sort of wraps up that plot point there. But I just thought that was interesting because it goes against my prediction where I was like, oh, well, this might be actually Mecha <laughs> The whole <laughs> imagine the whole movie is is actually just Mega Godzilla and we don't see Godzilla actually show up to the end like <laughs> oh man that? that that would be like it would be fine because it's still like technically Godzilla right like you still see him physically yeah but then it would feel like I feel like it would be more of a stab in the back for like King Kong fans because then they would be like oh he never actually won or whatever against Godzilla it was actually the fake one but uh yeah yeah. All right, so we're going to be getting to the big question, which is who wins, Godzilla or Kong? Um, so from what I've been able to see online, or from what people have been talking about, it sounds like there are a total of either two or three or like two and a half-ish fights, uh, with the second and third fight pretty much spanning like the majority of the last third of the movie. So it was very long and a lot was gone into, was oh, gone into that. That sounds so exciting. Just you reading yeah. that line. I'm just I like, know. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Um, yeah, because it sounds like I've seen some people say there's two fights. I've seen some people say there's three fights. So something like the second and third fight might just be like blended together in a way. But um, according to what I've seen, uh, it sounds like Godzilla is able to pretty handily win versus Kong in at least two out of the fights. Um, and he actually has the opportunity to kill Kong at the end of their third fight, 
which I think is a pretty dis uh, decisive way to say that Godzilla is the ultimate winner at the end of the day. Um, because I think, I, I forget, I don't remember who said this, but one of the, um, I think it was the, maybe it was the producer or director, one of, one of the guys who worked on the, on, the, on the movie said that the movie would have a, a, you know, a clear winner. There would be Godzilla or Kong as a clear winner in their fights. And it sounds to me like Kong uh, is, is going to be the, end up being the loser here. And I know a lot of people were thinking, oh, because I think actually if you take a look at the box office numbers, the Skull Island movie actually grossed more money than either of the Godzilla movies, the 2014 movie or the 2019 movie. So I saw people saying, oh, well, Kong's uh, movie made more money, so they're going to have him win at the end of the day. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, uh, d yeah. there's, in my head, like, I love, the thing is, like, I'm rooting, obviously, for Godzilla. But they've established both of them as heroes, so you kind of want to just root for both. But there, in my head, there, Godzilla literally fought a three-headed like dragon thing from space, and and like survived the nuke and blew essentially destroyed all <laughs> of Boston with like a Vegeta final explosion at the end. Like in my head, I'm just like, there's no way for Kong, even with his axe, there's just no way Kong would like. Because above all else, Kong could probably have moves, but I think Godzilla's most impressive thing has always been his durability and how long he can fight. Yeah. Like, that dude, like, yeah, for <laughs> it's sure. crazy how long he can fight. Yeah, and then, I mean, we can go back and talk about the original Godzilla vs. Kong back in 1962, where I think, you know, it's sort of ambiguous, but I think it was in the uh, the American version of the of the movie, Kong was the one that you saw emerge from the water and swim away, right? So he, he there was like an indirect way of saying that he won. Yeah. Um, and I think if Toho actually made a statement saying that Kong was the winner of that movie. I believe but so. But then I think they reversed that later and said it was a draw. So was, there's like a very, it was a very non-decisive yeah. way to end that, <laughs> that showdown. Whereas this one, I think they, the reason why they went out of their way to make it as decisive as they did is because of the backlash that they got for that uh, back in the 60s for that that movie. Um, but I guess, so we'll chalk it up to 1-1 one, one now, right? Because yeah. Kong won that first one, I guess you could say. And now Godzilla, um, I guess, is pulling away with this one here. So... Uh, for all the Kong fans out there, um, I would argue that this is probably not going to be the last time we see Kong in a movie that's part of the MonsterVerse, but we'll see. Yeah, like everything, <laughs> um, like especially just hearing from critics and everything too, a lot of the problems they had with King of the Monsters, it seems this movie rectified, like all their first reactions and stuff, I've seen a lot better than than uh than the previous film so you know it, it definitely won't i don't think kong is such an american icon that it, this won't be the last time for sure right and then sort of like the last two points i want to mention real quick the, what happens at the end of the movie um this is also a big spoiler for people who haven't clicked off yet if you haven't clicked off at this point okay sure <laughs> um, so Mecha Godzilla obviously shows up at the end of the at the end of the the third fight with Kong, right? So it's sort of after they've already beaten the crap out of each other. Um, so they're both exhausted, and uh, just as Godzilla's beaten down Kong and start, uh, he start, Mecha Godzilla basically shows up and just starts like destroying Godzilla because he's so tired, <laughs> right, from the fight against uh, Kong. That's sad so to there's really not much he can do, right? It's just like him being super exhausted from the fight. Um, it's kind of I don't know how I feel about that because it's kind of like all right, I get why he's winning, but is it really like does this really feel like satisfying to watch like we know we all know godzilla is not at his 100 percent like full power here right yeah um so i don't know i mean to me this sparks the question of was it even worth including mecha godzilla in this movie or would it have been better off focusing like purely on the godzilla versus kong aspect of the movie and then making a separate movie dedicated to mecha godzilla versus you know godzilla or maybe if they want to do a team up with kong in that movie too it would just be like the two of them versus mecha godzilla as a complete movie um because to me it sounds like this is sort of something that was squeezed in at the end um without really having much planning to it because you know the movie is called godzilla versus kong right it's not called godzilla and kong versus mecha godzilla <laughs> yeah like and also like we said in the beginning keep in mind we haven't seen the movie so obviously when we do see it we'll probably have more context to a lot of the mecha godzilla stuff because uh i don't i kind of in the same boat where i feel like you, they should have probably saved them for the next movie but if the plot revolves around this whole Ghidorah head uh like screwing with Godzilla's like brain and because and that making him like super pissed off and by the end of the film 
like like Mecha Godzilla is with the the Ghidorah brain or whatever, then that is like it's like a Me- Mecha Ghidorah Zilla like thing like hybrid that they did <laughs> yeah. for like yeah to like seal off that plot point and like just be like well Godzilla's good again all right peace everyone I think that's kind of the way they did it and also a way for like you know to have the the big team up at the end because at the end of the day we get our our wins like you know whoever you're rooting for but I, there's I, we all know like they're both quote-unquote heroes in this universe so kind of like batman versus right. superman but uh, i think this one sounds like it's doing it like slightly better <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it actually does have a lot of parallels to Batman vs Superman because that movie was, you know, Batman vs Superman, and then at the end there was Doomsday, and they were just like, all right, well, let's team up now. <laughs> yeah, and it, and the funny thing about that is like the probably one of the easiest fixes of that is just like like you mentioned Mecha because it's like cut Doomsday out, put him in the next movie, or at least fix his design. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because if you look throughout the history of all the Godzilla movies, which we have done by the way, we have a video dedicated to each era of the to- Toho's Godzilla universe. Um, if you look through all the movies, there has been a there have been a ton of movies dedicated exclusively to Mechagodzilla. Like how many? Like seven at least, or maybe not that many. Like five plus. They're like, they're like yeah, four um, or five. Yeah. Yeah. So, I would say that at the very least, Mechagodzilla is a character that deserves his own movie. Um, and then so, them sort of stuffing him into the end of this one. I mean, again, we haven't seen the movie, so we can't really say for sure that they're stuffing him in, quote unquote. But um, it sounds like they're sort of being a little bit disrespectful to the character, but we'll see. Again, we haven't really seen a movie yet, so we can't really say that definitively. And I, I don't. Um, but yeah, it's kind of. I was going to say quickly, it's kind of weird that the uh, the King Ghidorah head literally just like seemingly <laughs> yeah. fuses with Mechagodzilla. Yeah. Um, because it sounds like it's supposed to have like a pilot initially, and then once they do actually end up finding that energy source in, in the Hollow Earth, the Ghidorah head literally com- comes to life and fuses with Mechagodzilla, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like, all right, well. That's weird. <laughs> it kind of, it's like, yeah, it's, and it, again, bringing it back to Batman v Superman, which even the director mentioned like multiple times in interviews, uh, it's very much the same where like you can, you can argue Doomsday had a character because it was formerly General Zod. So it's like, you can argue maybe that's why he's super aggro on Superman or whatever. Um, but this one, it, it, in a weird way, like I'm, the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of liking it because if it, if it is this whole Ghidorah fuses thing, it kind of makes sense that it it's at the end of the movie because it awakens and like the first thing it sees is the one that killed it <laughs> it's like all right i'm gonna kill you now you know what i mean yeah so it's like it's like a right. revenge story so i don't know it's pretty cool yeah and then the way that they actually defeat mega godzilla too is pretty cool because the axe right we haven't talked about the axe yet oh, we yeah. see the axe in a lot of the trailers there's that one scene where he's like kong's lifting the axe up and about to hit godzilla with it you know he's like reflecting the atomic breath or whatever um the way that they actually take down mecha godzilla is you know godzilla's getting destroyed by mecha godzilla because he's so tired from the fight versus kong um kong actually teams up with godzilla so it's them two versus mecha godzilla and so what happens is godzilla charges up the axe with his, his with his atomic breath and then kong uses it to just like completely just destroy or cleave mecha godzilla down so i mean that sounds like it's definitely going to be a really cool scene to see you know actually transpire in front of me but um yeah i guess we'll see how how well they execute that yeah just 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 hearing everything because like keep in mind like obviously yeah. like if you're up, if you're still watching to this point we've like me and grash like off like off like video and everything like we've all talked about like theorizing and he even made a video like a month or like a month and a half ago talking about like all the theories and stuff like we we essentially knew a lot of like the kind of teases and stuff and like the first trailer showed mecha guns <laughs> like the first frame so it's yeah. super exciting to just hear these things because like seeing them is a different story Right. And then the last point I do sort of want to talk about real quick before we wrap up is the fact that there is no post or mid credit scene um, in the credits. So what does this mean for the future of the MonsterVerse and will there be a future period? Because generally when you take like people go into this movie, number one, they want to see the movie. But then number two, they're like, OK, well, now that I've seen the movie, what is next? Right. Um, 
a lot of times, and I think Marvel was the big culprit of why this whole thing started in the first place, was a lot of times people see the movie and then because they're so engulfed in the story and what happens, they immediately want to know what happens next. And that's why the whole mid or post credit scene thing became such a big, uh, a, more, a popular thing to do for a lot of these movies, franchises. Yeah. And the fact that there's none, I mean, that either, me- that either means that they don't know what the direction they're going to go in yet, which is fine, right? Um, so that might be a reason why. And then, or number two might just be that because they just don't have plans to do anything right now. Um, or maybe they just didn't want to. Maybe they wanted to keep it a secret and they didn't want to tease anything right now. I mean, there's a million options here, but I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on the fact that there's no mid or post credit scene? Um, it's like half of me wants to believe there is still going to be one because um, I know people have seen it in theaters already and it pretty much confirms it. But sometimes... I guess it really just defeats my, my whole argument here, but sometimes with screenings and stuff, they don't actually show post credit scenes. I, seem, I believe some Marvel movies did that, and like some screenings until like the official like release date and everything world, uh, worldwide, then those films have like uh, post credit scenes and stuff. But judging by the fact that it already released and there, there's reports that there are none, so rip that. But I think it, I think I'm more on the, on the line of uh, they're kind of waiting and seeing. Because they know the reason. Because I'll say right, uh, judging from what happened with King and the Monsters, was they the movie underperformed. It still made like a decent mo- a d- amount of money, but it would it didn't perform as well as they thought it would, and then critically wasn't that successful. Um, obviously, hardcore fans loved it, right? But the reason I think Godzilla vs Kong was coming out was because they were already in production. Like they were like already set. Yeah, because it was right. supposed to come out like a year. It, yeah, it was supposed to come out last year in like September or something. So the movie was already in production. There was no stopping that train. Um, that was gonna happen. This movie's gonna happen regardless. So I think now they kind of like are waiting and just like, okay, let's see how it performs on HBO and like whatever people go on to go see it in the theaters and see it because judging by the outcome of the movie, everything's kind of wrapped up for like for now, you know, until they bring in a new big bad or next evil corporation or whatever, you know. So it seems like everything is pretty wrapped up but they did expand enough to leave it open so yeah i definitely agree with that i think a lot of this is going to depend on the success of this movie right yeah um we're in a time right now where it's very um it's very non-clear how well this movie is going to be doing right because theaters are still kind of in a shaky spot um people don't really feel comfortable going to going to theaters in all parts of the world right now still People don't really, a lot of people don't really care for subscribing to things like HBO Max, which is which this movie is debuting on for the U.S. So there's a lot of unknown variables that go into, um, you know, whether or not they're going to continue this down the road. But I think at the end of the day, it's from what I've heard so far, the movie sounds like it's going to be very, very hype. Uh, people have liked it generally from what I've seen. So I would put my money on there being a continuation of this franchise, the MonsterVerse. Yeah, I'd probably put, the, put it there too. All right, guys. Well, that is all we have for this video. Again, if you like this sort of content, please feel free to hit that red subscribe button down below to see more content covered here by Five Nine Gaming. This has been Gorash joined by Varied Geek on Godzilla vs. Kong spoilers. We will have a full movie review out either the day of the video, or the day of the movie release in the U.S. or the day after. Um, we'll sit down, we'll watch the movie, and we'll give you our full review of the movie. Um, But that's it for us. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you all in the next one. Later.